The big benefit of working for yourself is that you can work whenever you want, as much as you want. Provided that you're making enough to make ends meet, you can kind of do whatever. And I love the ability to start my workday whenever I want to, to work as much or as little as I'm feeling any particular day, and that's an enormous privilege. But there is a really big, obvious downside. This video was brought to you by Squarespace. Ever since I took art and YouTube full-time almost exactly a year ago to the day, I have consistently struggled with time management. Not even just finding the time to cross everything off on my to-do list, but balancing my admin and editing work with my art and all of that with the rest of my life. It is way too easy for me to get absorbed into work and to lose track of time. I love my job, but I don't think that I always have really healthy boundaries with it. All too often I realize that it's been a week or two since I've left the apartment and I've been too busy filming videos and spending days at a time working on paintings. The problem is that there's no one telling you how much to work, and so no one is there to tell you that you should stop, to clock out for the day, you did good champ, see you tomorrow. You can really easily find yourself in a position where you're working yourself to the bone. Almost every self-employed person that I know has had that moment where they realized they left their old job because they were tired of being exploited by their boss. They wanted more flexible hours and the ability to pursue their passions. But instead of living that dream life that they were hoping for, they just ended up exploiting their own labor and overworking themselves. And I was in that situation. I realized that that was exactly what was happening to me. And so I, I took action. I got back into gardening, I got back into making sourdough bread, I got back into trying to make my work-life balance a little bit more sustainable and better for me, and I made a ton of art. The past couple of weeks, I have been working on a ton of new projects. The first thing that I started was this brand new master study of this Charles Warren Eaton painting. Charles Warren Eaton was a really big, very famous tonalist painter. I've talked about tonalism a fair amount. It's an art movement that I really love. It emphasizes atmosphere and dreaminess and really unique lighting, and this particular painting was very unique. I've never painted a sky this green before, and it was really cool to, to study this and to put it all together, and I feel like I'm learning so much more about color theory than I ever have before by studying this movement. And then I went on to do some gouache stuff and some more painting, and I I've just been having a lot of really good art making moments over the past couple of weeks. It's been a breeze. It's been fantastic. But while I was working on all these paintings, especially the Charles Warren Eaton painting, I was realizing that even though I managed to, I'd managed to bust out of that like creative block that I was experiencing and I was building this healthier relationship with work and the rest of my life and I was exploring all of these completely unrelated hobbies to anything that I do for work. I was gardening, I was getting tomato plants, I was expanding my houseplant collection, I was doing all of this stuff, but there was this other problem that I'd been avoiding for a long time that really kind of finally came to a head and it was a crisis with my content. I mentioned this in my art block video, but the past couple of months have been not that great with my content. It's not that I'm not proud of any of the videos that I'm making. I am, and I stand by the advice that I give, unless I explicitly have said so, or it's like five years old and then maybe some of the stuff is outdated, but I feel like there's something missing with my content that was there before. And because the performance has been going down a little bit, I think I've been getting desperate. And when I'm desperate, I make poor choices. I try to go back to the stuff that works. And I've been doing so much of that that I am exhausted by making advice videos. <laughs> I don't have anything left to share. I feel like I have exhausted my well of tips. And whenever anyone asks me to do a video on a particular topic, I'm like, I think I've already covered that. I don't know, it's just, it's frustrating not quite knowing what to do. And I have so many ideas. The lack of inspiration is not the issue here. The issue here is that I feel almost like I've put myself in this very particular small box on this channel and I'm not sure how to escape it. It feels like I've sealed it up from the inside. And like I said, I am happy with the videos that I've made. Like I feel like I can stand by them, but 
I also feel like I can't quite move past them. I want to explore new stuff, but I'm not quite sure if my audience will watch it, and that's a little bit scary, and I'm not quite sure what to do there. A couple of months ago, if you'd asked me in September, I would have said, start a second channel and build a new audience, and I have a second channel. I've been posting videos there, but I also feel like that's not quite the right space. I've been having flashes of ideas of new stuff that I could make. Stuff that I don't really see the other people in the art community doing. Really cool video essays, deep dives into more niche business stuff, like interviewing other artists, asking them, how did you start out? And kind of building up other options, like more resources out there, people looking to branch in different careers and stuff, and more like kind of deeper, advanced videos. A lot of the stuff that I cover on this channel is a little bit more for beginners than I think is optimal for the long term. I really want to dive deeper and I need to figure out how to get over this kind of self-doubt that I have about posting it. I'm not quite sure what to do there, like what actions to take. I feel a little bit lost right now, but I feel very secure with my art. With my creative practice, I am not gonna lie, I am so incredibly excited. That trip that I took to Monterey and Pinnacles and Carmel by the Sea was fantastic. I have, again, so many reference photos that I cannot wait to paint and I have been working at them very steadily. I've been designing new paintings. I've been photoshopping my reference photos and doing sketches and gouache studies in my sketchbook and just having an amazing time. And it's like so weird to be in a situation where I feel very confident about my art and the direction that I'm taking there and simultaneously very lost when it comes to the rest of my job. One thing that I've been doing while I'm kind of in this content crisis is making more short form content. I never thought I would say this, like genuinely never in my life thought I would say this, but I've been posting on Instagram again on a more regular basis and I've kind of been liking it, as weird as that sounds. I've kind of been liking it. Is that weird? It's probably weird. But listen, YouTube videos are a lot of work, right? And sometimes I don't wanna sit in front of the camera and say stuff. I don't wanna record. I don't wanna do my hair. I don't wanna put makeup on. I have really bad like under eye bags. I don't wanna deal with that sometimes. So I've been making short form content, editing it myself, and it's been really fun, like genuinely really fun. And it's been kind of working pretty well. I've been reaching more people via Instagram, which is cool. Some people now don't even know that I am a YouTuber, which is weird, but also cool and I kind of like making reels. Ooh, that sounds weird. <laughs> like just putting together a really quick video with footage that I've already recorded because I'm in the habit of recording. I think that's almost the biggest barrier to making content, right? Getting into the habit of recording, knowing how to film good shots and like getting the equipment because the editing for a short form, at least the content that I'm making is not difficult. I know there are people out there that are making masterpieces, like stop motion and claymation stuff and short form in that that takes forever and they are so cool and impressive. And I met one of them at this recent retreat that I did for work, um, Creator Camp, and it was so dope, like so amazing. But the editing that I do for my short form is super minimalistic, very kind of bare bones, takes me like an hour to make three shorts and, sorry, three reels. Everyone has a different name for the thing. It's really annoying. Three reels and I've been posting it on Instagram and on YouTube shorts and it's been doing okay. Like nothing is, done extremely well. I did one short that got 70,000 views. Um, I think it made me like 10 cents in case you're wondering. No, I think it made me a dollar actually. Sorry, it made me a dollar. Huge difference. <laughs> yeah. And one of my Instagram reels did I think 25,000 plays and that was pretty cool. Most of my Instagram reels are around maybe two to 4k views and it's been kind of nice just like putting stuff out there, sharing more art because like I said, I feel lost on this channel. I don't know what to do. And that's a really weird situation to be in. But again, I feel super confident about my art and really excited and inspired. And I got to figure out a way to solve that problem, you know? Transitioning more into my work-life balance stuff. I want to talk a little bit about that for a minute because I think I've somehow cracked the code. Outsourcing my editing for some of my videos to my lovely editor, Tomas. Hey, Tomas, thank you so much for editing this video, by the way. Tomas is great. Everyone say hi to Tomas. It's taken so much off of my plate. Like I have so much to thank Tomas for because like it has changed my life, my guy. Like it's meant that I can paint more. I can make more stuff. I can live my life. I have expanded my garden quite considerably. I am growing carrots, lettuce, peppers, four different kinds of heirloom tomatoes, strawberries, snow snap peas. I'm also growing onions and hollyhocks and cosmos and chrysanthemums and nasturtium. And I have a blueberry bush, a pink lemonade, 
blueberry bush and a raspberry bush that should fruit next year. That It's just like a ton of stuff all in my balcony in my apartment, my studio apartment. I'm growing all of that stuff. And it is like so much fun to put my hands in the dirt and like replant things and think about soil pH and like growing time temperature. And it's just like a very different thing from what I normally do. And I am loving it, loving it so much. Do you know how pleasing it is to plant something, grow it from seed, and then suddenly you have like a real life strawberry that is, okay, to be fair, a little bit ugly. A little bit ugly, but in like a cute way. Ugly in a cute way and delicious. Most importantly, extremely delicious. It is so pleasing and so fun. I've also been getting back into baking bread. So I am a big, big home cook, big bread fan, love bread. My boyfriend Drake is super into baking. This man can bake the most advanced recipes. It boggles my mind. He makes such beautiful, pretty things and is so good at baking. And I started this sourdough starter a couple of months ago. This sourdough starter lives in my fridge because I really wanted to get into more into like bread making because I dig sourdough bread. Sourdough bread, so good. Fresh bread, amazing. And I was like, hey, like Drake is doing all this stuff. He's making this like fancy pane bianco. He's making cinnamon star bread. Like he's doing so much. And I want to try baking just like a regular loaf of bread. Like, can I make sourdough? Cause that'd be cool. And I did that earlier this week. I baked yesterday. In fact, I, ba I baked a sourdough, like a sourdough loaf from start to finish. I had my starter, fed it, did all the steps and oh my God, it was so good. I baked it in a Dutch oven, this like green, um, what's the French cast iron enamel brand? Oh my God, I totally forget. That is embarrassing, but I got a used one off of eBay and I baked my bread in that and it was so, so good. And I also made fresh pesto with basil that I got from the store, pine nuts from the freezer, and I eventually wanna grow my own basil, of course, but oh my God, fresh bread, fresh pesto, amazing. 100 and million percent recommend. It was, oh my God, it was so good, you guys. It was so good. Before we get into the rest of this video, of this like cute little vlog, I want to briefly thank the sponsor for this week's video, Squarespace. I've used Squarespace for years. If you've watched my channel before, you already know, and they're an amazing tool for artists. They're honestly probably my favorite all-in-one website creation platform. They make it super easy, and I've used Squarespace to host my website for like forever, basically. <laughs> Their third-party integrations makes like, my prints on demand super easy. I recently kind of changed my homepage on my website around a little bit, kind of updated some things, wanted to advertise my new imprint storefront and like my Notion templates and stuff. And I was just once again blown away by how easy it is to design really nice websites on Squarespace. Their new drag and drop like fluid engine editor makes it incredibly easy. It was just so fast to get a site up and running, like to update my page and to make it fit my brand, to make it use the colors that I wanted to use and just like overall look really nice. And their third party integrations make running a business just all that much easier. You can sell your prints on demand super easily via Printify and Printful and their other integrations that you can get via API. And with their tax jar integration, I can collect and remit sales tax automatically, no more panic attacks. It's just really simplified my business overall. Squarespace can really be the central location for your brand on the internet, linking to all of your platforms, serving as a portfolio and an online store and whatever you need it to be. If you wanna try it out for yourself, go to Squarespace Squarespace.com slash Kelsey Rodriguez and use code Kelsey Rodriguez for 10% off your very first purchase of a website or domain. Now back to the video. I figured I should do at least one like kind of check in to this vlog. I have not filmed vlog content in a really long time. It is, it has been a hot second. It's been, I think probably over a year since I've, since I've done a vlog. I feel like on the internet, and in the art community, there's a lot of like pressure to have everything kind of figured out or like people will judge you if you don't have stuff figured out. And I'm going to be honest, I don't have a lot of stuff figured out. Like I feel way more lost with my content than I ever have before and somehow more confident with my art journey than I have in a really long time. And it's like, that's such a weird feeling to be both super confident in one big area of your life and totally lost in another. It's like the situation is completely reversed <laughs> and it's a really weird situation to be in that I've never found myself in before and I'm not sure 
what actions to take, like what I should be doing. And I just kind of have to figure it out, I guess. And that is, that's scary. So, okay. Real talk for a second. I stumbled across this thread online last night that was entirely dedicated to like shit talking me. First of all, I do not recommend that you go out and try to find this thread. I do not recommend reading this thread. I should not have read this thread because I hurt my own goddamn feelings. Like I knew what I was gonna find there. When I figured out what it was, I was like, oop, this is about me and it's not good. I should have not read it, but you know what I did? You know what I did. I, I read it anyway because I'm dumb. I'm dumb and I'm too focused on getting approval from other people because I am an eldest child and I should really go to therapy and I read the thing and it hurt my feelings and I should not have done that. But some of the points that they were making hurt more because they were based on insecurities that I'm extremely aware of. Like I way too aware of myself sometimes. And it was like, oof, they are also noticing that. They also think that's a problem. That sucks. And some of the stuff they were saying was just like patently mean, cruel, not gonna let that like eat at me, whatever. The stuff that really hurts is like when it's actually like, oh, I kind of agree with that a little bit. Yikes. Or like, I see where they're coming from. And so the kind of, the comments that were like that were like, you're posting too much business stuff. You're not staying true to yourself. Like, I want to see more of your art. And like, I cannot tell you how many times I have had those comments in my comment section, had those emails, had those DMs. Like, I am inundated with that sentiment. And it's like, I am trying so hard <laughs> to go back from that and to like, take that into consideration and to be better and people aren't watching and like that's just it's a terrible feeling terrible feeling do not recommend and it's like okay yes this is on me to make interesting stuff how can i make stuff more interesting and that's just kind of like really made the whole like content crisis worse when people are like i wish your content was this way and i'm like i am making those videos I can tell you didn't watch them because you left this comment. And it's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I feel very conflicted because, okay, I know that I'm gonna get comments that are like, you should make whatever you wanna make. We'll be here for whatever. But like, I wouldn't blame you if you weren't here for whatever. Like, I wouldn't blame you if you did only watch the business stuff because when I watch content, not gonna lie, I mostly watch educational videos that provide value to me. I do not watch a lot of art vlogs. Gonna be honest. I know there are people out there that are like me that watch my content. Cause like I'm making the content, I'm probably gonna attract people that are like me, right? And it's just, uh, it's a complicated problem and it's giving me a rough time. And I don't have a lot of answers, not gonna lie. I do not have a lot of answers, but I'm trying to just make stuff and brainstorm ideas that are new, that have never been done before in the art community, that are not established trends. I don't wanna pivot really hard into the stuff that everyone else is doing in the art community. I don't want to make a ton of roast videos. I don't want to make a ton of like basic tutorials. I don't want to make a ton of um, week in my life, day in my life stuff because I feel like that is kind of overdone. I want to see what I can do that is new and different. And that is a tall order. In the year of our Lord 2023, there are so many videos out there, my guy, so many. And coming up with an idea that's even 1% original is a little bit of a challenge, but I'm trying. We're gonna see what happens. I've got some ideas. I've got some tricks up my sleeve. We're gonna see how it goes. Um, totally unrelated, huge topic shift, but I am actually probably moving in the next couple of months. Probably moving. I have loved living in this apartment, do not get me wrong, but it costs a lot of money. Um, the Bay Area is, breaking news, expensive. Who would have thought, right? Oh my God. <laughs> what? The Bay Area? A very famously high cost of living area is expensive. Kelsey, Kelsey, sweetie. <laughs> I've never heard that in my life before. But yeah, I mean, I'm paying about the same rent that I was in New York City to live here in Berkeley. And that doesn't feel quite right. So my boyfriend and I were thinking about moving into a group house with a bunch of other people, mostly from like his social circle and like his office that all live together in this pretty big house. And I was really unsure about it, right? Because when I've lived with other people that I don't know well, it has not historically gone well. It's been pretty bad. <laughs> and I was really not sure about it because I was like, I don't really know how much I wanna move in with like five other strangers. Like, I don't know how I feel about that. What is the kitchen situation gonna be like? What if there's like weird rules that people have? And I think that my concerns are totally justified, but also not applicable in this case. I've met with my potential roommates a couple of times now and I think that they're totally reasonable, totally chill people that I will have no problem getting along with. And that was a big relief. <laughs> 
because it's like a thousand dollars of savings. Like moving into this group house compared to living in this apartment is a thousand dollars worth of savings. Do you know what I can do every single month with a thousand extra dollars? Like I could fund even more of my retirement. I could put more money toward like an eventual down payment because I would love to own a house someday. Absolutely love to own a house someday. I would love to own like a small, cute little house in the Berkeley Hills or like just next to a farmer's market every week that I could just like paint the inside of, make it look really nice, build a little library, have a little art studio that's in like a separate room and have a garden and like all of these amazing things that I would love to do. Like DIY projects, would love to do DIY projects. I would love to own a saw. I would love to be like a power tool kind of girl, kind of woman, kind of lady. Would love to own power tools. Unfortunately, in my studio apartment, that's not really like a feasible reality, right? But would love to own a house. And I love living in the Bay Area. Like this has all of the best parts of Minnesota and New York City. And for me, it's just like really an amazing thing. You have the good transit of New York City. Granted, it's obviously not as good, not nearly as good as New York City, but it's still pretty good. And you have all of the good nature that you can find here, which is so unique. California has so much geographical like diversity. Is that even the right word? Or is it ecological? Geological diversity? It, it, shit looks different, okay? There are mountains and stuff and pinnacles and Monterey and like Yosemite and the Trinity Alps are all somehow in this state and that's crazy. There's desert, there's mountains, there's rainforest. I don't, it's wild. Um, and I love it here, like so much. The weather is amazing. Um, the prices, I feel like I'm being shot in the face, which is admittedly a little bit unfortunate, but there's transit, there's farmer's markets, there's like all of this good stuff. And I would love to stay here, like long-term, would love to. And I would also love to own a house. Like I mentioned, unfortunately owning a house and also living here, it's kind of a tall order, right? Down payments are so much money. And I know that the impression is that like YouTubers make bank and I've been very open about my finances, but the amount that I make here puts me like in the solidly middle class of the residents of the Bay Area. Like in order to save for a down payment on a house here, I would have to save for like ages because houses in the Bay Area are like a million dollars. Not even kidding. They're like on average a million dollars. It's ridiculous. A million dollars gets you a like, one bedroom house that's maybe habitable sometimes in some neighborhoods. And that's just like a lot of money. <laughs> that's more money than I can possibly imagine. And a down payment is like 10 to 20% of that, but that's also still a lot of money and it's just gonna be a lot of savings. <laughs> a lot of savings if I ever wanna do that. But the point of that whole tangent was that I'm moving and I'm hopefully going to be able to set aside more money toward an eventual down payment because I would like to eventually own a house. That would be really cool. None of my parents, my mom and my dad are not financially stable at all. If you read my community post a couple of months ago, you'll know more about my situation with my mom, which is a little bit chaotic and unfortunate, um, but I don't come from money. And even the slightest like definition of the, like, no, not even a, at all, not even a little bit. And building this career and making more money and being able to make money from my art and my content is a very alien concept to most of my family and something that they didn't think was possible and that they encouraged me against. So it's been a really wild ride, but also it's been very much a situation of me kind of inventing stuff along the way and figuring everything out as I go. So yeah, I mean, I feel like everyone always like tries to encourage you to get everything in your life together as fast as possible. But if you're in, you know, the same place as me, if you're in a similar situation, if you resonated at all with this, I want to let you know that it's okay to not have everything figured out. It is okay to figure stuff out as you go along and make mistakes, recover from those mistakes and just try your best. And that's okay. That's really okay. I know that sharing on the internet is rough. People judge you a lot. There are a lot of hate comments out there. That is distressing and disappointing. And I wish that that wasn't the case, but it is. And there's not a ton that you can do about that, except for just like setting standards for your own community. There's only so much that you can do, but when you get all of those comments, they're gonna misunderstand you. They're gonna misconstrue you. They're gonna assume the worst. And you don't have to like, read that. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to take it to heart. You can just continue following your own journey and figuring stuff out and being super clear with your audience that you don't have things figured out. I feel like I have said that so many times in this video and just again, doing your best. It's okay. So many people do not have their stuff figured out. You are in very good company. And yeah, if you want to talk more about this and like support 
my channel more if you want. I will link my shop down below. I have an in-print store now for open edition art prints, which is super exciting. And I also have a free community Discord server where you can join in and chat with me even more if you wanted to pitch in. There's like a Patreon-like option over there on the Discord as well, where you can get early access to new videos, exclusive content, audio newsletters, and a couple other things. It's a good time. I recommend joining the Discord. Again, it's free. I am in there like every single day, so the chances that you will be able to chat with me are like pretty high. It's a good spot. It's probably my favorite place on the internet. Um, yeah, if I'm being honest, it's probably my favorite. So yeah, that is, that is it for this video. I hope that you guys have an amazing rest of your week. I feel a little bit lost right now. Not a ton has been resolved for me, but that is okay. If you have any ideas for content or suggestions, critiques, whatever, let me know down below and I will, I'll read them. You know I'll read them. I will definitely read them. So yeah. All right. I'll see you later. Bye.